So we're back on our journey through hell. Um, it's going to take us at least probably four to six episodes, given how every paragraph has been hilarious. I'm Adam, and we're going to treat this seriously written stuff as schlock, because it's written in Microsoft Word, and literally it is schlock. I'm Alabaster the Unicorn, and after a year of year of shitty books, and probably years more, and being alone, and being pathetic, I'm here. Uh, how y'all doing? It's, it's, your, it's your favorite boy, uh, Biggie, Nick, Biggie, no, no, it's Big, Biggie, Sonic the Hedgehog. And after uh, a while of hiatus, I, I'm finally back after my parents abandoned me to go to Florida. So I, I guess I'm going to be here. I, I have no idea what's happening. I, I, I wasn't here for the last episode. In fact, I didn't even watch the last episode. So uh, you're, you're going to have to be my guide through this uh, wonderful uh, hell that you, you're, you're letting me come through. I'm the doctor, and my brain partially broke after listening to what he just said. I am Mrs. Dioxid, and I guess I am kind of the resident um, um, Derek Dishaw like expert, just because I kind of followed this guy like in the early 2010s when he had his own cult. So I know a lot about this guy, and I'll never let him live it down. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, he had a cult. Yeah. <laughs> it had so few members that he disbanded it out of shame. <laughs> it was located in his parents' basement. Oh, no, no. In his defense, it was probably just the basement apartment of maybe his guys, parents. Guys, 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 you're being rude. It was in the loft. There's a clear fucking difference. Has to... <laughs> <laughs> but and how can I he am... get closer to hell if he's in the loft? He has to be <laughs> yes, in the basement. He... Hell is down. Heaven is up. Fall is logical. Also, I'm Randall Frag and... Just from the second paragraph alone, I this is going to be a wild ride. Yep, so uh, after reading about the races of, uh, I guess in the Empire Satanus, there's more races outside of it? I, I don't know why it's subdivided like this, but let's go with it. The Leger Rive, uh, aka the Kanaima, in the untamed jungles outside Kathana, which is the name for the Hell Dimension, I think? I don't remember I, the terms because they're really kind of dumb, but I think this is the hell dimension that the setting kind of takes place in, not completely. It's kind of dumb, but it's almost as if he made it all up as he went along. You don't say. What? You're saying that Derek Dijaw isn't an intricate and a thought-out world builder on the par of Token? How, how dare you mindless peons not have the ability to telepathically understand every single word that I've written in Microsoft Word in one draft? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Okay, so this is what I picked up from the last episode. Basically, there's a hell dimension. There is the normal universe. Losers, basically neckbeards, go to the hell dimension to work for the crimson or black, depending on how he feels that day, because every color under the fucking rainbow that's red or black has been used to describe Satanus, has been used. And you become half alien, half human, and half demon. And you just do things for the evils, literally. You just do evil for evil's sake. There's no reason behind it, you just do it. And uh, we're learning about the amazing races. Uh, like the Kanaima, which, as mentioned, in the untamed jungles outside Kathana, beyond the rainbowed barriers between the plains, <laughs> beyond the unlit and unexplored reaches, dot 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 lives a race. <laughs> <laughs> a Dramatic race, much? A race like us and unlike us. I hazard to I even like speak of them. You. Oh, and by the way, um, the writer is a Lovecraft fan, so you'll see him very desperately try to ape his prose quite a bit. Only to warn do I reveal what lives outside our civilized infernal dominion. Uh, also, this is a complete change, by the way, from the previous races. This is written in first point, uh, first person. The previous ones were not. Oh so God. we have a we complete shift. tonal shift. So only do, to warn do I reveal what lives outside our civilized infernal dominion. 
This race is the Kanaima, a scattered tribe of devil insect witch doctors who live in remote caves of <laughs> the. I think Th- that's how you say Thaya. it. Thaya. 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 The new exercise fad sweeping the nation. <laughs> the Kanaima appeal to a terrible god. A terrible god in the hell dimension. So, what is the, Are they good guys? It's the super devil. No, I like the idea that, like, evil, good is evil to them. It, it actually hurts them, so it's like a benevolent god. It's a, it's a giant what? care bear. <laughs> it's a giant... What the fuck, man? You're just throwing all this shit at me and you're expecting me to know what the fuck you're saying? Yeah, that's kind of how this guy writes. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's not just because you're new. He, you're new to this guy, Baggy. That's how he wrote. He That's writes. half the reason it took us this long to get through ten pages. Does he? Does, now, f- you know this guy. Does he have like a, a, a con so you can look this shit up if you want to, or does he just throw the shit out and? Not- uh, I think he has like a boomer blog where he just whines about how old yeah, school. Yeah, he has. He actually does have a blog like it has like a has like a blog where he just spurks about tabletop so RPGs I, I, and so you're saying I, I gotta read his fucking blog is what you're, oh that's fucking I'll, I'll, I'll give you a link sometime but yeah actually correction uh... when I said he has two daughters like he actually has three daughters and two sons so he has five freaking kids total <laughs> well, he's trying to build his own cult he couldn't recruit anybody but he yeah. could make them <laughs> No, 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 because he had to close it. Not even his kids believed it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so they appeal to a terrible god that's nourished solely on pain and torment. And how is that different from Satanus, which operates on pain and torment? A level of suffering is carried out in this god's name that sickens me to even contemplate it. You do realize you're writing about a, a you're writing about evil <coughs> characters. Why? Whatever. This tribe of devil insect with doctors, can't even spell <laughs> fucking witch, you spelled it right previously. With doctors. With doctors. Scans yeah, with doctors. Doctors. Damn you with doctors. It, it's almost with. like, it's almost like this is a first draft from Microsoft Word that was run through a dot, you know, dot with. doc t- to dot PDF converting agent. So anyway, this tribe of devil insect witch with doctors scans and sifts the planes for a suitable victim, someone strong as well as someone nearby, an outsider. For months, they stalk their victim, leaving little signs that a Kanaima is watching. <coughs> this seems like a complete waste of time. When the victim is alone, the fiend takes them and brings them to his cave, bound in chains. The torture begins with the shredding of the, oh, of the victim's anal lining. And God! I have... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, I have the perfect looks music like the, for uh, Well, it looks like the Ray Lulu came back with a vengeance. <laughs> Only they're bug people this time. Barbed reeds. Reds? <laughs> what the fuck? Does, does he mean like, like reeds as in the plant? Or does he mean like they shove books up their ass? I, I just okay. Let's uh, let's put this children's dictionary up his ass. Ah! <laughs> no, let's put no, that's nothing. Let's put the complete works of Tolstoy. Oh God, no! <laughs> I'm just now envisioning books covered in barbed wire. <laughs> So goddamn stupid. I'm just now envisioning a tribe of bug people that just read books covered in spikes before shoving them up the ass. What the fuck? Yeah, we're, we're not even like t- we're not even like a paragraph in, and already I want to end. Now this. you know why this will take us a while. Oh, Here's what I think yeah. what happens: is that uh, maybe that's how they actually read. They read with their ass, so they think the best way to do is get people to read, but. They don't understand that they're killing people. Oh, so, oh, so uh, their version of Braille is barbed wire around barbed wire <laughs> lettering. Um, would you like to read a relaxing collection of poetry? Oh God! Ah! Blood is yeah. blood is a normal reaction to reading. Yes. <laughs> Uh, 
Barbed reeds, so I guess barbed books, are used for aggravating the anal wounds. <laughs> there is, of course, more, but I will spare you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, think, I think that was too late. I think that was too late. That was a paragraph too late. <laughs> It's like a paragraph too late. The god of the tribe grants the witch doctor power based on the suffering he inflicts upon his victim. <laughs> After the victim has died, the corpse is buried in a shallow grave near the cave. A period of three weeks or so go by. Then a hollow bamboo shoot is stabbed through the dirt and into the body. The Kanaima then proceeds to suck out the death juices through the hollow bamboo shoot. <laughs> That's actually kind of metal, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that, that act... That's actually kind of awesome. No, that's, like, kind of neat. They're getting high off corpse goo. This also gives power to the witch doctor. Finally, the corpse is left to decompose. The bones are dug up and used in a ritual to find the next victim. And the process repeats. So, they're basically just a tribe of bug people that fucking dance around the fire trying to find people using their bones so that they can shove books up their ass until they die. <laughs> And then they get high off of their corpse gases. I don't think they get high. I think it's like, uh, I think it's just like how flies eat, where they just eat the the, the corpse juices, it, like that's what they eat. <laughs> Little is known about the Kanaima's god. However, this much has been discovered. They serve Lidra Rive, a struggling elder insectoid god bathed in leprous and discordant amber-hued liquid fire. How can fire be leprous? I, I don't think he knows that leprous means that you have a bunch of scabs and sores. Maybe, maybe <laughs> like, his chitin is scabby and sore and, like, fire oozes out of it? That's kind of cool. This god gave birth to the Kanaima as Satanus gave birth to the <coughs> Yidrathoth, which we don't know what that is. I think that's all the demons we read previously. However, this unnameable you f didn't they f didn't he fucking name you it? no this unname uh, aimable unameable oh yeah because he didn't add the <laughs> second n also he fucking named it <laughs> barbaric <laughs> nightmarish gods subsequent attempts to produce offspring result in deformed still births. This race gets one free skill level of blood magic. So this is a playable race, but for some fucking reason, that's the race he decides to do from a first-person point of view. <laughs> Why? Uh, fuck if I know. That's that his aesthetic, Adam. Don't criticize his aesthetic. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean other No, it's literally like. the only one. The other, uh, all the other ones are from third person. Yeah, no, that, that's his aesthetic, Adam. Don't criticize his aesthetics. So You're the, just being a hater. So the Rivzella... Or Rivezella? I, I don't even know. Praying mantis demons with alien beacons shedding an emerald illumination. They have spent many decades in a prison dimension. No. Play, paying for their sins against Leger Rive. I thought he didn't have any other... Okay. Rivezella's disobedience to their god has not curtailed their foul, unworthy nature. This guy does realize that, like, by, by the standards of the fiends that we read earlier, this is kind of nothing. Yeah, there's there's no anal tearing. From early on, the Rivezella could fly through hyperspa the hyperspace. Uh, what the hyperspace is? No fucking clue. This is also the first page it comes up. Going farther than any other fiend had gone. E even even the cracked out dwarves who buried through all the layers of hell? Apparently. They are, they are natural travelers, journeying to new destinations and bringing foreign culture and wares back with them. Rivezella have been all over Yid Yidathroth, so he can't even spell his own... No, 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 okay, he's consistent. And I've seen things that would drive others mad. So they're basically a race of praying mantis merchants that live in a prison world, I guess. So so they're they're kind of like Mad Max meets traitors. I, I, would, say, I would say drug cartel meets merchant. With a dash of Australian. The happy, the happy mantis merchants. <laughs> I'm just now envisioning like they all have Watto's voice from Star Wars Episode One. They all sound like Watto. Totally Watto. Take, we, you will take you will take Republic credits. No, 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 Je no Jedi no. tricks. <laughs> anyway, the race gets a free skill of hyperspace sorcery, which is the first time we've heard of that. 
and one free skill level of Dimension Magic, which is also the first time we've heard of that. I think the next one might be a... We'll figure it out. Races of the Odragoa, which actually does kind of sound Lovecraftian, that name. Goa Asht, the Soul Drinkers. Some think of them as devil vampires, but you already have those. They, they drink blood and go insane. They were first descended from Satanus, but then reborn through Odra Gua. The Goa Asht can nourish themselves by absorbing the soul or essence of those near them. This race sees themselves as highborn nobility, born <coughs> to gods, and frequently their kind can be found in one of the first two estates of Kathana society, Kathana being hell. Perhaps because of this easy lifestyle, most Goa Asht are degenerate in their spiritual life. As a rule, they care little for the higher realms of transcendence. Th these are far less interesting than the previous ones that you've read. Yeah. It's, it's pretty obvious that this was just the writer going, well, shit, I need more races. <laughs> so what you're saying is this was probably one of the last ones you made, is what you're saying. Uh, this is the filler race. It's these... like it's like halfling. You, you gotta put the halflings in there. I don't know. Just put some shit in there. There we go. Pleasure is their sport, and piety a mere distraction. They also pride themselves on being the least human-looking with their three small heads, each one about half the size of a regular head. <laughs> <laughs> An ectoplasmic purple red flesh. So they they look like g ghosts. Three headed <laughs> ghosts. This race well, gets. You, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get the the feeling that all of these like races just look like uh, heavy metal uh, al uh, album cover. He uh, was pictures. he was inspired by the movie Heavy Metal. Of course. So this race gets three free, non-magical, non-higher cost, personal specialty skill levels that fit with the character's personality, background, and the GM's campaign. They also begin the game in the second estate and get 500 Zerkas and starting equipment, slaves, accessory, etc. What does that any of that mean? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> On to the clown race. Literally, <laughs> the race of clowns. Yes. I'm sorry, what? Yes. What? <laughs> Send him the clown. <laughs> the clown race. What do you get when you get an edgy writer, a bad writer, and a person that didn't care past the first draft? You get what you fucking deserve. Releases this book. <laughs> <laughs> a race of Harley Quinn's kind of clown movie book. Movie book. Lurga retard retardo. Lurga Gid Ritato. Yeah, that's what it says, clearly, right? Yeah, uh, it, close enough. Uh, a race of Harlequins, candy color jesters, fools, carnies, and circus freaks. They establish the yearly carnival of the sleeper and the uh, Dedican Masquerade. Lug Ritardos wear multicolored costumes and paint faces and emotional exaggerations. Sometimes the Luga retardos use <laughs> like the uh, uh, was a uh, conjunction with mask mask. Many are the proprietor of some Oh no, the clowns, oh, boy, the clowns are cursing your mic. The clowns are cursing your mic, Biggie. Oh no. No, no I thought kidding. it was fitting. Like like your microphone's trying desperately. No, I don't want to read about Clown World. <laughs> well, 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 I I think it should. As I was talking about clown fetishes. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I I actually like clown porn. Do, do you guys also like clown porn? I, talk about clown porn. <laughs> I think he's desperately trying to just get kicked out of the out of the chat right now. So they I'll are, continue. Okay. So, all right. So they're exotic fetish corporation. They are business oriented, studious. Um, abstract thinkers, sardonic, logical, calculating, intellectual, and often students of mathematical laws of probability, which is their own brand of spiritual transcend. Actually, Physically, you, you they, skipped the wait, first half, which does validate your clown porn reference, because... Wait, why are they mathematical? Why are clowns into oh. mathematical laws of probability? Is that because, like, they're, they 
because like probability ha- usually has to do with like gambling or something. Oh, I thought that's one thing, but you forgot the uh, many pro- are proprietors of shady entertainment or exotic oh, that- fetish corporations. Oh god! <laughs> oh, I thought that cut stars. Oh, that cut out. Oh, I didn't know that cut out. But yeah, basically, it's basically saying that clowns run clown bra. Which I would totally go to. Whatever now, as for why they're business-oriented, uh, logical, I think this is just the writer trying to do the anti-clown while having them clowns. Physically, they have very small ears, or no ears at all, and an elo- elongated tongue, multiple amber and shoot cat eyes randomly placed on their head, and a mass of wrinkly green worms emerging from their spine. And these uh, fiends were spawned by the god Oogie Oogie Gonorrhea. And Ned truly feeling these oogie googie ass ass fall. This race gets one free skill level math magic and Candyland magic. Candyland magic magic. exists. (laughs) I think someone else should take uh, should take it. Sorry, man, your microphone is a little too unstable. Oh my god! I shall do this. Shoot, shoes a goose color. Or ooze covered skeletons with dreadful glowing eyes. No, skeletons. 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 <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. Skeletons. Skeleton. Oh, apparently, skeletons are different. <laughs> their rotting flesh and fungi occasionally sprout from their exposed bones. The Tel Shoggi have recently come back from essentially wrong pilgrimage to other planes. A holy mission of... Uh, that doesn't flow well together. A holy mission of slaughter and mayhem. This is so, so just Bob. murder hodoboing. <laughs> They're fighting the skeleton war. Feeling it was their duty to cleanse the hellish dimensions. They left a familiar realm of crimson chaos to give out or order goas Merciless justice to all non skeletons. It's fiends, actually. I like to think this is. I'm just now envisioning just an army of. Ah! Oh, oh my gosh, the, t- the tops shriek from some horde so as plain as they're being, causing others to be. They do scream! Ah! <laughs> yeah! They just scream! Yes! Nothing, but ah! Spooky, scary skeletons. Shivers up your spine. <laughs> they are returned to. Cathena has caused quite a stir in feed society. Ah! Most are glad <laughs> not to see these determined killers and executioners walking the same street as themselves. The Tao Shag get one free of unmentionable shriek. Yes! Ah! They, do so <laughs> they, they also get one free skill in any higher cop. That skill, one free fungus magic skill level. So this and the clown people are kind of the winners so far. Yeah. The previous ones were kind of shit. <laughs> well, what scream. is with the game? Math magic, fungus magic, candy land magic? <laughs> we're, magic we're probably going to get into magic. that later, and it's going to be a complete trash fire. Do you think there's something, do you think they have fart magic by any chance? Uh, probably. Maybe. So, Drakic Crumb. I don't know what that word means, but it's apparently a word. Rom is your god. <laughs> Rom, your god is weak, is in air. Mount Krom is mountain like rock. Let's not bring anything good into this, please. <laughs> Malako, the keen eyed, hungrily waiting savages. This race is just as tribal and ancient as the uh, as the Kuresh, which I very much remember as the literal African tribesmen that uh, that eat brains <laughs> and nearly as bloodthirsty and vicious in combat as the Zerakian, which I think are the cavemen race. <laughs> the Malako can be found in the shadowy jungles of Thar. What's Thar? Who fucking cares? It's never described, at least now. As well as the small planet closest to the new dimensional gateway Tovya, a harsh, desolate world. Some are found in the more civilized regions of Kathana. However, they quickly form close-knit cults around the minor deity they worship, along with Satanus, named Drekith Krom, the god of all things, that lurk in the gloom of hideous twilight. 
The Malakho have sought to worship Dreketh Krom in order to keep in touch with the old ways, as well as receive the terrible lore that he has to offer. Satanus, a more disciplined and cerebral deity, feels slightly betrayed by this branch of the Yidathroth, and very few of this race ever feel the cold, welcoming touch of Satanus. <laughs> so, uh, what a catty bitch! Not only catty bitch, but now it gets a little creepy, like he's the weird molestery uncle. <laughs> if you're wondering, Biggie, I always envision uh, the Satanus as kind of an El Presidente-like demon figure. He's an incredibly well, like, but he's he running like an actual figure or like no, he's the, I, I yeah he's the, the crimson fucking... and or black god because this writer can't fucking figure out what color he, he's represented by but the hell dimension he's, he's the... kind of the ruler of is basically tropico well, okay, uh, if, if there's anything we know it's for a fact that he's all colors of the lgbt <laughs> <laughs> I like the thing. I like the fact is that we can play as his advisors. If we play a game, let's play as his advisors as we're doing. <laughs> You're running hell into the ground. You're running hell into the ground. <laughs> he's, just, and he's just too busy <laughs> snorting lines of coke to care. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm, no, no. I'm imagining him at uh, Satanus as him from the Powerpuff Girls now. Oh That's my even god! Better. Yes, <laughs> I love it. Even with like the creepy voice and stuff. <laughs> yeah, of course. I don't know if it'd be so it was like a very flamboyant voice with a bit of a reverb. Yeah, it was a bit of a reverb and uh, just kind of like a falsetto voice. So, Dreketh Krom is an older and more primal god who was all but forgotten in Kathana before the Malako revived his worship. So, basically, they just brought a god back from the dead. <laughs> The Malako are naturally contrary and obstinate, so they're just a race of trunk contrarians. Every, <laughs> everyone knows that the best captain in Star Trek is uh, is that uh, is the one from Discovery. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Archer. I'd be like, oof. A, I was think I was tough. tempted to say Archer, but I, I think my, Michael Burnham would be more painful. Even though she wasn't captain, I, I know she wasn't, but like, fuck it. Who cares about Mirror World, man? Who, who cares about not Pike? That's played as kind of Pike, but not really. Star Trek Discovery is the best Star Trek. Like, that that's the type of people that these guys are. <clears throat> Everyone knows that the best episode of Star Wars is episode 2. D&D 4th uh, edition was the best one. <laughs> The worst edition of D&D is either 3.5 or 5. We haven't, I haven't figured it out yet, because they're so bad, respectively, in their own ways. AD&D was the best one. No, that's and not that's... too controversial, though. Well, well, yeah. But no, no, no. They, did, the they made, three, they made 3.0 one. far worse when they upgraded it to 3.5. More like a <laughs> downgrade, if you ask me. Monks are the best class and are totally broken. But I'm glad that Monty Cook. Uh, I I wish Monty Cook would have had his way because because marshals are far too over. <laughs> so I, I like this. So we're envisioning this race as a bunch of compulsive liars and contrarians. I love yeah, they're just delusional. They're a race of delusional hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the wild because the city life is so boring and cliche. It's best to live in nature with as God intended. And meanwhile, Satanus is like going, No, I intended for you to all live in my glorious hell cities. You're not. Don't tell us what to do. <laughs> you can't tell us what to do. <laughs> Few people get on their good side and stay there. Malako often take an unpopular position, but when they <laughs> adhere to it for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Metroid <laughs> Other M was the best Metroid game. <laughs> it's basically just like, you know, take the unpopular position for taking, for the sake of taking the unpopular position, not because they really strongly hold that opinion. Yeah, maybe it's not one. one. Maybe, there are any one. So maybe they're right. compulsed to, maybe they're, they have the compulsion to take deliberately the most unpopular <laughs> opinion and to run with it just because. That's oh, God. Oh, God. They're like a, they're 
fucking race of bait post. <laughs> but they're serious. <laughs> Star There's... Trek Five was the best Star Trek movie ever. Whenever they talk about best Star Trek movie, it's a good argument between Star Trek Five or Star Trek Nemesis. Oh god! <laughs> the, the the new Next Generation movies were much better than those horrible old old shows that they had. Now I know how Jay Bauman feels whenever Mike just goes on about Star Trek. <laughs> Get on, get on topic, you fucking hat. Everybody knows the sequel trilogy of Star Wars. Get on topic, you fucker! <laughs> Their skin is a charcoal gray, sometimes with streaks of white or one of the many wonderful shades of green. They also have six fingers on each hand. This race gets one free skill level of hideous twilight magic and one free level of a higher cost combat oriented skill. Is there a difference between hideous twilight magic and non hideous twilight magic? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I don't think I don't think this guy knows. I'm starting to, these guys. I think are I, even I, though the ass skeletons and the clowns are great. I think so far this this race has taken the cake. Yeah, like <laughs> we're finally getting into the to quote Gordon Ramsay. Finally, some good fucking food. <laughs> <laughs> Ceremono, draconic troglodytic swamp zombies. Oh shit, we have hillbilly zombies. Yes. <laughs> One of the things I can tell you about them, but we're again in first person for no fucking reason. <laughs> so, so I have a theory here. Derek was originally intending to write all of these um, bios in first person, but he got lazy and only did like one or two. Or, or maybe like some of these were blog entries he just copy and pasted into this Word document. Yeah. I don't know. I, I have to like look on Derek's blog, Derek's blog like to see how... How like he writes? I mean, he he actually is has like a Kickstarter like for for a new game called like Chaltz. I I don't it, I, I don't think it's been released yet, but like it's hope I, I hope hopefully it's better. I mean, he improved. I, I mean, mean all, all he needs to do to improve is if he just actually doesn't use Microsoft Word and actually tries yeah, to make a book. Yeah, actually proofreads. Oh, his lore is his lore is top. I mean, oh, also, don't take yourself seriously because if no, actually he, he knows, should because if he doesn't take himself seriously, he's in on the joke, which usually makes it shit. But yeah, eventually it would be nice to like if we if we could like you know get a hold of Chaltz to like review that and see how how much he's improved. But so yeah. uh, one of the things I can tell you about them is you can see the fear in their eyes. Yours, the, these venomous mercenaries routinely skin their victims alive. <laughs> Oh my god! So they're swamp zombies, but they're also a tribe of alien demons who love their space and freedom. Oh my god, they're libertarian <laughs> zombies! This is... Well, they're, they're reptilians! <laughs> they're no step on snake! <laughs> this is so fucking good. <laughs> Sire and Noah are ferocious when boxed in. Probably their strangest ability is vomiting up their inner man or soul. <laughs> <laughs> These fiends can vomit up the substance, a putrescent gathering of muck with feelers and eye stalks. Their souls can leave them once per day and can see what the host sees and vice versa. This out-of-body soul can enter new bodies as well. However, the soul can only exist outside their original body for a few hours. Eventually, the soul is reconstituted through the Sarameno's pores of their pallid gray flesh green flesh. Many of this race reside in the corpse light swamp where they practice their personal vision of voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> they fashion little dolls of clay and swamp mud or sinewy muscle and bone from the dead they then use puppet magic to awaken these dolls to become their tiny servant oh my god they're a race of they are they're a race of hillbilly zombies that have bug people inside them <laughs> this is great they're... you know i'm gonna say it i i just maybe i'm just the wrong person for this but this is all so fucking wild it's just maybe I, I feel like I'm the wrong person for this kind of thing because I'm really liking the ideas, but at the same time too, it's like what the fuck is going on? It feels like there's too much. You know what I'm saying? This is a guy trying desperately to world build, build an edgy, dark, satanic, Lovecraftian world, and this is what he's coming up with. <laughs> I like it, but at the same time too, I feel assaulted. The race was born of Drek Krom, the god of hideous twilight, and have a natural kinship with the Malako race. 
so so these guys actually get along well with the contrarians. Everyone everyone knows that the uh, that the best season of Doctor Who is the current one right now. It's literally the best in, that they've had all year. And the best Doctor before her was the sixth Doctor. See, Adam. that's what I'm saying. None of the other fellers get it. Adam, just get back on top, thicky fuck. No, I want to. I'm having fun, you asshole. Don't stop <laughs> trying to tell me to not have fun. You can't tell me how to now to not have fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, man. Uh, next, you're gonna tell me that Mulan Two is better than Mulan One, and that the remake of Aladdin is is worse than the original. Okay, what's the times, man? <laughs> have a natural kinship with the Malaka race. Drek Krom desired an aggressive and watchful race of creatures who would obey him first and foremost. Some Sermano have risen to become shamans and seers. They are occasionally consulted by those who burn with the need to know answers. However, the knowledge Sermano grant is always a morbid one. Their predictions invariably revolve around the death of those near the Querent. I mean the the asker, or the questioner himself. He's saying querent, but he should be using questioner. I think he's trying to say queer. Probably. Physically, they are naturally hairless with elongated fingers, stand seven feet tall, almost a foot taller than most fiends. Sermono gain a free skill in puppet magic and one free skill in hideous twilight magic. You know, I'm liking these guys. You gotta get off my land or else my puppets are gonna turn you into another puppet. <laughs> Zibza. A gnarled, scaly black tree with irregular eldritch and dripping limbs. A dozen small toad heads suddenly erupt from its porous ebony skin when amused, startled, or angry. These dozen or so small toad heads whisper of the gloom, shadows, and the nightmare of existence. <laughs> One of the first fiends created from the gods, the Zibza is thought to be a collaboration of all five deities. They are the oldest race and the most concerned about demonic purity. There is talk of the watering down of fiend society. Those born in the last hundred years or so have not yet proven themselves. And most elder Zibza would say that now is the time when the greatest of each race should emerge to vanquish the human lands. The Zibza are so, so they're ancient. Eugenicists. They're not just eugenicists, they're also atheists. The, they're, yeah. they're freaking boomers. The Zibza are so ancient, they are all but atheists, believing that the gods are no better than them. Only a small degree of power Sonora. keeps things the way they are. Some yep. say that the most powerful Zibza are the closest to ascending to Godhead. So, they are gods, but they don't believe in God. Being an atheist means you don't believe in God. What the fuck? I say, being an atheist in this world is actually kind of stupid. It's like it's already it's already like proven that gods exist, and like being an atheist means you don't believe in God. Not that you don't choose to acknowledge God. It, it's the kind of like trying rebellious. to be an atheist in D and D. It just doesn't fucking work. It doesn't. It's just... Just, just say you're rebellious. It's that that fucking hard. God damn. Or uh, or you're anti-theist, anti-deist, or was it maldeist? Or the the, the or what's you're the? You're apatheist. Like you just don't give a fuck. Yeah. So anyway, these weird frog trees get a free skill in plant magic and nightmare tech. Nightmare technology. Nightmare that's, technology. That's the oh. great name for a band. Yes. I love it. Oh god, there's more gods. Tula Vra. So, the, I guess these are the gods that made these races? I think so. That's, okay. So, the Lashera. The Lashera have two hairy, ape-like heads, and their bodies are covered with crimson and violet scales. Each arm ends in a forest green sucker tentacle. An extended pineal gland grows out of their forehead. He watched from beyond and stole that fucking design. You, you motherfucker. <laughs> you motherfucker. No! You're saying Derek Deshaw is a hack? <laughs> no. He's ripping off like a bunch of ideas here. And a mouth crawls out of their abdomen, its lips hungrily smacking, teeth grinding, and it is giant tongue reaching out. <laughs> the, oh, God. <laughs> these interesting specimens come from the god of nonsense and childish amusement, Tula Vra. They were born out of a bad dream and have taken on the nebulous qualities of youthful games. 
Lashera's motives and drives don't really make sense to outsiders. They are here for the perverse pleasure of defying reason and logic. I'm not supposed to exist. End my life. I think <laughs> I think that's how they're, they're designed. I feel like they all have Patrick voices. You gotta, you gotta do it, SpongeBob. End my existence. It's an affront to reality itself. I can't do that, Patrick. Why not? Because your defiance of all known logic amuses me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the most chaotic of fiends and the least serious-minded. Lashera con- continuously laugh at themselves and others, reminding fiends with their surreal works of life is. That life is but a dream. They're, they get, they're just they a, get a race free... of shit posters. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they're they're the are. ones trying to tell everyone that they live in clown world. <laughs> is this is this the failed script? Is this the initial failed script for the has been hotel cartoon? <laughs> It's either that, or maybe it's it's like the creator realizing for a brief second that what he's writing is such a farce that he created this. They get a free skill level of Candyland magic and a free skill level of Dream magic. Oh shit, there's the creepy puppet race. Oh yes! Damn it, not more! Vazra, this creepy race are ventriloquist dummies that became sentient ages ago. Through the influence of Tulavra, Vazvra resembled dead babies with clown makeup. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> of course, he has to bring up dead babies at one point. Dead babies. Yeah, if he wants to be into those shit, you have to bring up dead babies. And grotesque, bulging eyes. Some are so well-fashioned that they don't look like dummies or dolls but all, at all, but real babies. A few are made very crudely and look more like badly carved blocks of painted wood than young children. Their lower half reminds one of a snake as they slither towards whatever mischievous sickness entertains them at the moment. They like to bite their foes, secreting a paralyzing serum as they chew on their enemy's flesh. As a side effect, the victim usually comes to like the feeling of the bite. Fiends call it the happy poison. So this is a race that bores you to death. <laughs> so I guess this is the lolly race, I suppose. I mean, it's a race of dead babies dressed as clowns. Yeah, it is a lolly race, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I think babies might be a bit too young for that. <laughs> Not for, <me. laughs> Not for it's me. Japan. It's Japan. Oh, man. So, uh, I think at the end of this episode, Biggie's going to get arrested. I don't know. I hope. This race gets one free skill level of Paralyzing Bite, which works exactly like the skill Quivering Palm. What does that mean? Who the fuck knows? They also get one free skill level of Candyland Magic. Oh, here's something great. The Smile. The Smile. This racial abomination was said to be cursed by Tula Vra for their literal minds and unfair criticism of their god. The smile are mostly just a mouth, brightly colored lips with eye stalks growing from the tops and sides. Below a twisted crimson torso writhes below the gigantic grinning, grinning mouth, often muttering, often muttering of strangeness and the wrongs of their past. Some are melancholy and others laugh maniacally. The smiles would have everyone look disfigured and nonsensical as themselves, but realize others do not put up with their cosmetic readjustment for very long. Their words are powerful and can use language against their foes quite easily. One free skill level of word magic and one free skill level of flesh magic. So these people just hate their, themselves so much that they want others to be as pretty as them. Just like the Necrons. Yeah, or like, you know, or like, you know, what of, or like those bitches in high school. Anyone else want to take the burden? Because we're at Human Fiend Hybrid and I've read quite a bit. Uh, I'll get this. Human Fiend Hybrid. Human infiltration into the Fiend's Yidoroth universe has become quite a problem. Areas beyond Katana that house humans are called sometimes called the Infected Lands. <laughs> During raids, some human women, and occasionally men... <laughs> oh boy. Are God raped by damn free- it! Oh no, yeah, we're going fatal. We're going fatal. Uh, uh, 
But yeah, at least he, he at least he said occasionally then because you know most people forget about that. Oh yeah, that that, that makes yeah. it, that makes it that makes it much more better. Much more better. No, <laughs> it's I'm trying to look at the positive. Damn it! <laughs> there is no positive. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see that the hellish and brutal fi fiends are tolerant of homosexuality. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it worse. H.P. <laughs> Lovecraft was not approved of this faggotry. H.P. <laughs> Lovecraft isn't appro didn't approve the fact he was like 116th Welsh. That's <laughs> why he wouldn't want to be doing this. <laughs> well, to be fair, do you, do you want to be any part Welsh? Nope. Could be worse. <laughs> you could be, you could be like one part a, Australian. I have a good portion of Welsh ancestry, and I hate myself. Alternatively, some fiends take human slaves and regularly have sex with them. The universe wow. of Shala, of course, is full of humans, and fiend invaders can create weird, hellish spawn as well. In any case, the offspring of this unclean union becomes a hybrid race, often hated and treated with contempt and disgust. Half-human, half-beans creature find no easy place in either society. They can live nat naturally live for about 500 years. They bear some likeness of both species. Pure humans have no natural resistance to magic and instead are very, very susceptible to fiend magic. Thus making it real, the I win button every time. Of course. Hybrids get their choice of one free skill level of magic. So that, that they kind of suck. Because everyone else gets at least two. By the way, hybrid is. <laughs> no, actually, it's not hybrid is. It's hybrids like the possessive. You don't need a, an apostrophe there. GG. Oh, now we're going to learn about race relations. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Wow. I, I hope it just degenerates into just a variety of angry racial slurs. The fiends, ra the fiend races li more or less live peaceably with each other <laughs> in and around Cathan. Bullshit. However, divisions occur between races, and these are the stereotypical positions of each race within fiend society. The, uh... The goo, uh, the goo ash. Do you even remember the what shit. those are? I th uh, no. No. To show it, gang. Those are the those are uh, the skeletons. Okay, so and the clowns all have times to all have ties to the the Agru Jihad. as leaders of a fiend society. Uh, Gruash and the entertainment industry, uh, the clowns, they wield an unusual amount of power. It stands to reason that they are more interested in position, control, and wealth than most other fiends. Oh, no, the, uh, the, the, the last, the first ones, I think, the soul vampires. It took me a while to vaguely yeah. remember. Yeah. Okay. They jealously guard the secrets of their god, Odragahu. Tishalag's left in order to spread the awful word of their three-headed vampiric deity. Just a race now... of screaming skeletons. <laughs> well, you must hear the word, and the word is just, ah! <laughs> now that they are back, the other two races have more muscle on their side and use Tishangs as bodyguards. The Makalo, uh, Zibza, okay, the Zibza are the trees, and the... The, uh, the hipsters, the trees, and the hillbilly the zombies. Hillbillies. Are related to each other through Derek Krom, god of things that lurk in the gloom of hideous twilight. Such a very specific deity. <laughs> Should have just been the maybe the god of possibilities. Um. <laughs> or, or 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 the or the god of dark of dark future. The. Or just the god of night. The god of the god of unwashed public toilets. He's like. He is like one of the minor gods of evil. The god of yeah, the, the the god of stepping on a piece of Lego without wearing shoes. <laughs> the god of ripping off like a label of your mattress. The god of hangnails. The god of peeing in the shower. <laughs> the, god the god of god not of... signaling when making a turn. The god the of god not god putting of the toilet seat back down. 
the god of shitty RPGs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Derek Crom is the oldest god known to the Yadathroth universe, with Satanus not far behind. Nevertheless, the Kurash are not far behind in age or savagery. Always on the <laughs> yes, they're of... obviously the the race of black people are not far behind. <laughs> <laughs> Always on the outskirts of society, the races of Derek Crom show more respect for the old times before civilization, when all was tribal chaos and instinct. The times were dysentery, uh, Ebola, smallpox, and, and, and starving to death were treated as normal. Makalo, Samurnao, and Zibza care little for power, prestige, and society. They see themselves as simple animals, heightened with a stick in disturbing darkness, which other fiends shy away from. I thought, I thought the Saramano were just a race of hillbilly, like, basically like hillbilly um, genteels, you know, landowners that just live in the swamp like Shrek, but like use puppets to farm rice or whatever. And the Zibza are just a race of atheistic trees. They're like, one day, well, not even atheistic, one day we will become gods and kill the old ones. And the Malaco are just contrarians. Yeah, like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Serakians are the most isolated. Some are disgusted by their bestial lineage. Others disapprove of their reliance on physical violence. Most of Satanus's imperial murderers are made up of this race. Those are the cavemen, Z I believe. I think. Zerakians care about honor as well as position and power within the Brotherhood. They do not want to feel left out, though they are well aware of other fiends' reliance on them. It pays to have many a Zerakian on one's good side. And the uh, Zephyrgal, the Vim, the... Lazit, the Pikachus, and the uh, Charizards are all very social. These sound like bad Pokemon. Like, I don't know, they're not punny. Pokemon names have, like, puns, and they're not punny enough. They, these are words that Spongebob invents in his spare time. <laughs> Don't worry, like, Charles. You know, it's words that, like, if you just, like, pound on a keyboard, they, they like, come up. These are cat words. These are words invented by cats <laughs> laying on yeah, keyboards. Like, like, cats walking on keyboards. Words. Oh, I, know, I like the idea of there being a race called the Smeckledors. The Smeckledors. <laughs> the, the Sme I do Smeckle. remember the Schmeckbloods are the blood-crazy vampires. Spanish, and, and the Dirge are like the crazy dwarves that survivalist dwarves that fucking live in bunkers. I forget what the thought, other three are. I just know one of them's the frat boys. That was the Vim, I believe. I thought the Vim were the ninja satyrs. Oh, they might have been. See, this is why making up stupid bullshit names like this is bad. Especially because... since you don't spend your time doing cool things like what Vampire the Masquerade which would do which well, would have like several a couple pages for each one well let, let's let's go into like uh, would you say like what makes a race memorable too is not just like two paragraphs because like I, I can I can think like off the top of my head like a dwarf like they're small they're stuffy but at the same time too you get art and cool shit like that and then they yeah. not overly the, the race of, the race of dour and law-abiding craftsmen What's like the name dwarf? Like you know, it's it, it's like a, it's a name that's like memorable. Like oh, they're short, they're dwarfs. But like you know, these like nonsense words. Like I I can't like I can't comprehend them. Like as far as like you know, matching them with like stuff. Like I just forget about them. Like with like at least with like you know race with like dwarves like. You know, it's a memorable name, you know? And, and even, like, if you're going to make up names, you could do, like, for example, most people, when I say the word Rodian in this room, would think of Greedo. Most likely. You no. Know, no? I, I would have thought of, like, the city of Rhodes. That, too. Or maybe, like, you know, people know what an Ewok is, even though Ewok is oh, never yeah. used in the movie. Some of you might even know what a Toridarian is. That's Watto's race. 
but I, that's because the names aren't just smashing a fucking keyboard with your face. Yeah, exactly. Like they're they're actually kind of like pronounceable. Comprehensible. Like, uh, for, for example, the, the 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 I'm trying to think. The the dirge is probably the one I remember the best, and that's just because they sound similar to Dwerger, which are the dark dwarfs. And the Schmeckblut, I kind of remember because Blut is like German for blood. Those are the only two I vaguely remember fairly well. I'm going to forget the other ones that we read. I'm going to remember what they do, just not what their names are. Yeah, I don't remember any about, like, the Schmeckblut. And that's exactly why I remember the Schmeckblut, because of, like, blood, like, which is, like, blood. Like, for fuck's sake, you, you can name the frat boys, like, the I don't know, the, Z- the Zeta Kappas or something. Yeah. And, uh, Schmeckblut kind of works, um, but in general, the names are terrible. They're, they, it's just word strings. No one's going to remember them. But all those races are fairly social, ambitious, civilized, and well-rounded. They are the backbone of fiend society. Although fierce competition is not unheard of. And it cuts out there. Nothing more. All I, done. I, I'm done. Well, you need to get into mechanics now. Oh boy, that'll be fun. Let's see how mechanically inept to this book is. Actions, or how to do stuff. <laughs> this game has rules that mimic the rules of real life, like gravity and the chance of making someone's head explode just by looking at them. Oh, God, he's trying no, to be funny. No, Derek. Don't do that. <laughs> Notice that, his, cho- his again, his tone completely fucking changes. You know, I'd say he's trying to be funny, but I can... I'd honestly believe that he believes that he can make people's head explode. Maybe like, maybe <laughs> because at one point he almost had a stroke just envisioning, like, I don't know, his crying children's head exploding. <laughs> oh, I don't th- I'm not trying to say that Derek abuses his kids, but, like, I'm just envisioning him crying from a nightmare because he reads them goddamn Cthulhu books as, uh... Well, if you want, then I will. <laughs> I believe... Uh, well, if you want the I'll stay. I believe that this motherfucker may or may not abuse small children. So, uh, if you're gonna try any lawsuits, just uh, take that to the estate of Biggie. But warning, it's a long arm statute because he's a foreigner. Well, I guess I'm actually in international and... waters right now. Like, I mean, he, he like, based on like what his blog says, like he seems to like only be able to bond with his kids by playing tabletop RPGs with them. What a dopey <laughs> and awkward so... fuck. With, like, I think his oldest is about nine right now, so I guess you know. She, you, you, you know, know she... what Derek could do to bond with them? Take do something normal. Take him to the Sonic movie. <laughs> <laughs> Which, for those viewers wondering, it's actually surprisingly good. Or porno. <laughs> Take a fucking you know, nine-year-old you know to porno. Yeah. You know what's sad? I, I think Travis Bickle would be more with it with kids, and that guy is a weirdo who was obsessed with porn. I I think fucking Michael Myers would be better with kids than Derek. <laughs> I'm just now envisioning Michael Myers just silently teleporting into the house. The kids are sleeping and they just go, oh, oh, they feel like normal because D- Derek, Derek does weird, creepy serial killer shit in the house too. And Michael just fucking sits down and reads a book with them silently because he can't read. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then later on he just leaves and just starts murdering more teenage girls. <laughs> because, uh, Michael Myers, a friend to children. That uh, make that horrible idea Hollywood. Yeah. So probably. In between our various shades of possibility, the GM should make allowances for players to propose scenarios, altercation, events, characters, and setting particulars as the game unfolds. So uh, I think we've all decided that the setting will be very schlocky, just based on how embarrassing it all is. The GM can play a character too and get messed with just like the player's character. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Tip to, G- tip to personal GMs. Please never do a DMPC unless it's absolute necessary or if it's not the main focal point. Please don't. 
And and on top of well, actually, the way the system works is they kind of they kind of shift. Like each character can potentially take control of a scene and become the DM for a bit. Yeah, so you could like be the you you could like take control of the DM. And like totally, if you roll a six, and DM and like totally undo all the progress the previous DM made. Yeah, you basically you roll a d6 on a six, you can take control and kind of run the scene because reality is shifting towards your point of view. So, uh, the Empire of Satanus uses the good old six-sided die. When the game tells you to roll a single six-sided die, it's called a 1d6, or just a d6. When we tell you to roll three six-sided dies, then it's called 3d6. Now, when you roll multiple dice, do not add them together. Instead, take the highest number of all dice rolled. That is the result, your final number. For example, roll 4d6. Let's say you get a 1, 3, 4, and 5. Your result's a 5. Okay, so that's that's very different. I, I thought he was going to do like a dice pool system. Where you counted it by successes. This is the numeric measure of success set against a certain level of difficulty. The basic levels of difficulty are something that a GM assigns to a task or action attempted by a player. A no, or a non-player character which the GM controls. The target number for trying to do something easy is a 4. Doing something average is 7, something complex is 10. What? But you can only pick, you only pick the highest result, though. What the fuck? But yeah, because you can only go up to 6 unless they're talking about, like, you know, D20s. What? Yeah, that makes no sense, because they, he just told you not to add them. It's like... But, th you but then you add them, because I, I saw a little further in the paragraph. Yeah. Uh, so something complex is 10, challenging is 13, and unimaginable is 16. Don't despair, because these D6 rolls are open-ended. Meaning, if you roll a 6, then you get to roll another D6 and add the new roll to the original 6. What? Okay, so die so it, it, exploding die system, but you only get... Don't despair my f fucking ass! <laughs> So you you only get to you you get so you roll a six and that's only when you get to re-roll and like add add this add it. To you get the other if six. you roll a six, you get exploding dice, which allows you to keep rolling. So how what something average is seven? So your your average is impossible according to the system. Based on what I'm reading, where you only pick the the highest result average is impossible well maybe yeah. maybe there'll be some mechanic in a little bit that'll explain everything maybe Probably not. Yeah, no. maybe maybe I not i don't know i don't trust it most actions are determined by an attribute and a skill that seems likely for the action for example trying to discreetly poison someone would take a character's cunning attribute and his poison and drug skills numbers together to make a dice pool. So he uses a dice pool system. He's just really bad about naming it. If that character Caldor, that, hey, isn't that the name of a isn't that the name of a store that closed in like the nineties? Oh like, yeah, it is. But it's but it's with the C, I think. Yeah. It's spelled with a C, but that's funny. Yeah, it's named after. So that's the character clo uh, defunct business has a cunning of two and a poison and drug skill of one. Then his dice pool is three. He rolls three dice. Kaldor already has the poison in hand and the intended victim has his back to the character. GM says poisoning the victim's drink which would be easy. So the target's four. Player rolls his three dice and gets a two, six, and six. Kaldor is smooth. So you're getting an exploding dice situation. He rolls the sixes again because they're open-ended. He rolls the four and six. Nice. Player rolls that six again gets a two. His total is six plus six plus two. So, you only get to add the modifier then. What? No, you don't. Ah. What the fuck? So, no. so the skill levels, you add them, and then you roll the batch of dice. And then you just pick the highest one until you're through? I guess. But, 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 then, but then it has the exploding dice scenario, which means that it looks like you only do it on the explode. What? This is fucking terrible. Yeah, 
this doesn't look like this doesn't look really fun, honestly. Well, it looks like it's mechanically impossible. I'd just rather like you just do it with like d20s like if you want if you wanted to do that like not if, with d6s what i would do is your skill levels in a skill determines the dice pull the number of successes you need will determine whether something's easy medium hard or whatever if something's easy you only need one success if something is average you need two complex three challenging four unimaginable five and more something like that where the number of successes you get it determines how well you did. What's a success when you when you when you roll the dice pool? You roll, and if you get a five or six, or just a six maybe, kind of like everyone is John, you succeed. Yeah, I kind of like that better. That because it's normal. It's the West End system. Yeah, that makes that makes more sense. That sounds a lot more better. Because this is fucking terrible. Because if if. The characters, I guess this is Neckbeard Simulator, because they can't do anything beyond the barest of easiness. I, I can't <laughs> believe that, like, we've been doing this shit for a year, and this is the most broken. What the fuck? This, I, no, I would say on uh, Sigmana, because it didn't have the mechanical stuff set that Bombs and Bellaclavas had, is still more broken, but this is more functionally stupid. Because Sigmata's system, yeah, especially when you finally read it, flows better there is a better logic to it this is i sat on my ass and wrote this in a fucking day no i i could write a fucking system in a day i wrote a better better system for this for a strategy game that was a play-by-post it took me two days still wasn't good but it was more coherent and logical than this fucker Literally like everything banks on you rolling a d6 in your die pool. As far as you I can don't tell. Don't do that. Fuck off. No. <laughs> a character can, can attempt an action. <laughs> a character can attempt an action like seduction if he only has the appropriate attribute and not the skill. Our anti-hero has a two in attraction and no seduction skill. He rolls till dice. However, if a character has the two in seduction skill and a zero in attraction, he can't even attempt the action. Have you never heard of a Kavorka man, Derek? Kavorka men's are hideous dudes that somehow land hot women anyway. And there's the opposite where hideous women get land hot guys anyway. That sometimes happens. Man, life is so unfair. These damn women don't want to get with me. I'm a nice yeah, guy. Yeah, you know, there's such a thing as, like, you know, personality. Like, you don't have to be... You can be, like, ugly as fuck but still have a really good personality. And that and sometimes like, will... You know, like, and sometimes you'll become a magnet because of that. You're funny yeah, or like, witty or just be, like, really good. You like, a total fat fuck, but, like, you can have, like, amazing, like, funny personality. Like, there's, there's a reason why the funny fat guy archetype exists. No, no, no. You gotta take the red pill. See? It's all about the Maxalia. You gotta look smack yourself. I love the I idea of Derek just forum. taking a, a fucking condom and shoving up his nose and inflating it to fix a defect in his nasal bone structure. <laughs> <laughs> Which some of those look smacksers have <laughs> done, by the way. Yes, by fucking kids. <laughs> And he, he looks like a rejected war boy. He he looks like he looks like the stunt double for the guy who played Rasputin in, in Guillermo del Toro's Hellboy. <laughs> like like the weak version of that. A couple more things. If all or the majority of the dice rolled from your dice pool comes up once, then the action not only failed but turned into a disastrous failure. Something really bad and unexpected just happened. The character should not automatically get killed or something not fun like that. Instead, a failure grander and larger in scope happened. Our anti-hero... You mean anti-villain, because... If he's doing evil for evil's sake, he's not an anti-hero. I think the better the better noun to use in this would be dick-ass. Dick-ass would... Our dick-ass quickly disguises himself to blend in with a crowd of people because someone's after him. He rolls five die and three of them come up once. Not only is our anti-hero's disguise obvious, the pursuer also know the pursuer is now also wearing a disguise, a better one. What? So for some reason, just instantly. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just now imagining. I'm just now imagining a clown just kind of like putting another clown mask on his face, going honk honk. 
What the fuck? <laughs> this uh, it, is this supposed to work? Like, is this like, oh, it's the Cthulhu dimension? Nothing matters in this reality. Go fuck yourself. Um, he might be trying to go for that, but in reality, he's just he just couldn't be fucked to write the system. Oh Jesus! Our, our, oh <laughs> Jesus! You and you said this book wasn't suited for you. We're getting into the very gloriously designed mechanics. Aren't you appreciative of it? Can I can I get can I get an aspirin, please, somebody? No, I only have Hello? I only have more of this book. Ugh, man. So, yeah. or our antihero is now being followed to keep him away from his favorite plaything, or maybe the antihero is disguised as effective in mocking an agitated Zerakian, so a caveman, with a with a lightsaber because void saber is a lightsaber. <laughs> Why, how does the K-Man know how to operate the lightsaber? I don't know, but I just love the idea of Thog, of Thog Jedi Knight. Yes. You <laughs> costume insult Thog's proud heritage. Thog smash! I hate this. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh, oh. Also, if the character's action falls within the sphere of his color, and he describes what he's doing and how it correlates with his color in detail, embellishing the story, then he gets a plus two to his result. Okay, so you can only succeed when you're bullshitting, and it's like, and it has something to do with the magic color You can only succeed of- <laughs> on your average on a five or six if you're lying. What? Uh, uh. Amazing! <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm clueless right now. <laughs> I am too. Yeah, I, 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 you kind of, I kind of lost. He kind of lost me, like within the third paragraph, with like this color smear shit, smear shit. I like the fact we're just six pages in, and it's like. Oh God, I've lost the I've lost the narrative. Don't worry, so is Derek. L- let's keep going on this train wreck. Additionally, the GM should reward players for using detailed description and embellishment while describing their appropriate color sphere action. What's a color sphere? Fuck you. <laughs> should it be in this section? Fuck yes. Is it going to be? Fuck no. For example, a player describes as his character slowly brings the gleaming dagger out of it is. It is leather sheath, while he while he is crouching in the shadow of a nearby alleyway, and eventually pounces with the ferocity of a horned snake spined leopard. That would give the player rolling his dice pull a plus two to the results <laughs> if the character was of the brown color sphere. So you can actually get up to plus four. Which is I guess a good way to fix the I, you get, I get the feeling that these last two paragraphs were only made when he realized how impossible his system was. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Now, a smart person would probably do it along the lines of, well, we already explained it. Fuck it. I'm going to get looped again. Combat. Oh, oh boy. Yes. Because that's what you should put, not character creation. <laughs> you mean like it's every fun. other normal book? Fuck normal. <laughs> Fuck normal publishing. This is garage. This is underground. This is gonzo. This puts combat right at the start of the rules instead of after all the other important shit. This is gorilla. This is gorilla campaigns. Do you mean the ape, or do you, you mean the ape, right? <laughs> like an ape uh, wrote this? Probably. I like to think <laughs> ape break. That in this world, though, there is probably a, an ape with a Rambo bandana and a uh, an M60, and he's just gonna go. To there town. is. Remember, there's the caveman tribe that kind of looks <laughs> like gorillas. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> uh, Christ on the cross. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Well, it, it is like we're reading uh, a, a Lovecraftian tome, like the Necronomicon, or the Dem- or was it the Vermis Mysterious, the Book of Ebon, yeah, the, the Oakdown Shards. 
The phenomic manuscript. All twelve, all, all ten acts of the King in Yellow. Combat. A single round of combat in Empire of Satanus lasts for about ten seconds. It assumes that combatants are maneuvering, poking, jabbing, parrying, feinting, and preparing between all-out strikes, waiting for just the right opening before hacking takes longer than one would think. What? That was two sentences fused into one from brain hemorrhage. Waiting no, for just the normie. right opening before hacking takes longer than one would think. No, Normie. You don't understand <laughs> Derek Deshaw's big brain, galaxy size, IQ, Rick and Morty watching sentence structure. D does he just bathe in Szechuan sauce all day? <laughs> I mean, he has a slime fetish. Does he just make a, 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 a in his bathtub a puddle, a, like a big old wad of a gooey Szechuan sauce? And does he just fucking bathe in it? His waifu is Szechuan Chan. It's like a slime girl who's made of Szechuan sauce. Yeah. <laughs> in combat, the role mechanics work. Yeah, I actually think I saw a picture of so she she's like a redhead. She's I think she's kind of fat. <laughs> yeah, she's a fat redhead. In combat, the role mechanics work a little bit different. It all comes down to attack number versus defense number, so two hit versus AC. And whoever is higher wins, but but what if it equals? See, 3.5 came up with the solution that the attacker always wins, while 5e has the defender always wins if it's equal. What about this book? Nope. I don't know. Maybe he does say it, but I doubt it. This is how to calculate the attack number. Take the appropriate attribute, brute force for all combat except range and lightsaber, those use agility, and add it to the relevant combat skill level, such as melee combat, unarmed combat, ETC. For attacking and defending, do not use a dice pull. Instead, you add these together and then add a D6 on top of that. That is your attack number. By the way, natural sixes are not open-ended in combat, so they don't explode in combat for some fucking reason. So just because the die lands on a six doesn't mean you can re-roll the dice and add it to your six. Come on, man. You don't want to have chunky salsa moments in your fucking edge-ass game? No fun. I mean, that's actually pretty fun. I, I remember, it kind of reminds me of a time with, like, one of my characters when I got six crits in a row and, like, that... seven crits in a row. <laughs> that was fun. That was a fucking legend. Her battle dancer did over 400 damage. Her battle dancer did over 400 damage to this boss we were taking on and basically so, killed yeah, him. Oh, it's real bad because basically I had this feat where, like, if I crit it, I would reroll again, and I got, like, seven crits. I think either Roll20 bugged out or just God was on your side. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I had, I had like, I don't know what was, I, I never calculated the probability of that. I really should. It was like one in a hundred and something thousand, I think. But the thing, it also yeah. another thing is that, uh, is, um, I guess he didn't like Bruja battle bitches. He probably got, probably somebody, if he played World of Darkness, which I bet he did, it probably Bruja. Oh, battle bitch probably just eviscerated anything he threw against it. He's well, that's like, always yeah, funny. I mean, well, for fuck's sake, that's one of the joys about playing the. I mean, I know they don't have the license anymore, but Fantasy Flights, Warhammer 40k, and fantasy stuff was fun because you could do chunky salsa stuff with their. That's how Muhammad. Dice. That's how Saint Muhammad was. <laughs> that's also a story for another time. Ah, uh, Saint Muhammad. You yeah, bastard. we're not going to sully, uh, sully both this and and his story by combining them. It's like combining, it's like combining peanut butter and rusty nails. They just don't go together. Peace be upon the Prophet Muhammad, for he is the hero of the emperor, and the potato is his mighty weapon. Hint, hint. They were playing Talarni, so that's why. So, uh. Barack Bar. So, uh, <laughs> so the relevant combat skills, such as being a combat... So, basically, you don't get exploding dice, which is the shittiest thing around. 
The defender's a defense number is his agility and his dodge skill. Again, don't make it a dice pull. Just add them together and then add a d6. At the end, don't forget to factor in the defender's endurance attribute. Whatever the endurance is, that number is absorbed from the damage. So it's like the di It's soak. It's essentially soak dice. If the attack number is 7, brute force 2, melee 3, and 1d6 rolling in 2, defense number is 8, agility, dogda, dogda. <laughs> you were typing this in fucking word. How did you not run through it with a spell checker? I mean, yeah, spell checking isn't, isn't like, you know, 100% like fail safe. Like, you know, if you spell like... Yeah, but you have some pretty obvious misspelling. Yeah, like, if it's a pretty... Yeah, like, but he never used spell check. Like, I don't understand if, like, he... If, like, if it was, like, a... Uh like an actual word that like maybe like spell so maybe spell check like you know you know like missed it but he did use spell check so uh and you know the d6 gets a four the attack was unsuccessful if the attack is nine defense number six the defender would take three points of vi vitality away however let's say the defender's endurance is one so one point of damage is absorbed now only two vitality points are taken away at no point by the way does he explain what happens if you tie because that does happen quite a bit, actually. Especially with this shit-ass system. Wait, in other words, whatever attack number is left over after subtracting the defense number, that is the de damage the defender takes. Okay, so it would just be zero damage. Uh, if it matches, that's kind of lame. And then subtract the defender's endurance from the damage. Now, if the other person's turn to attack, and so on. Who goes first? No. Uh, who, yeah, who's on first, but what's on second? And I don't know who's on third. A small cadre of Vazra slither uh, angelically towards the blackish trunk of a Zibs... What? Oh, is that like an example of play? Yeah, it I is. Guess. Oh, God. So a small cadre of clown babies slither angelically towards the reing frog tree, who's propelling a spell... And a hulking caveman is wielding a morning star. Who goes first in the combat sequence? The GM should ask two questions from the players when combat's about to begin. What's the character's agility? And are they using a physical attack or magic? The person with the highest agility goes first and the second highest goes next. Blah, blah, blah. However, all physical attacks go first and then sorcery goes. So uh, in, in his, you factor in two things. Their agility score, highest goes first. And then, and are they attacking or using Ooga Booga magic? If you go Ooga Booga magic, you always go after the physical people. I mean, I guess there's a little bit of balance there. It's better thought that, out than how yeah. he handled the skill checks. I Anything is better than that. <laughs> a, a literal monkey typing this would Probably make better mechanics. Example, you have player 1, 2, and 3 fighting off the big bad guy. Player 1 has an agility of 1, player 2 has an agility of 2, and player 3 has an agility of 3. The bad guy has an agility of 2. Players 1 and 2 are using physical attacks, as is the bad guy. Now we can start combat. The first round looks like this. Player 2 and the bad guy's attack happen at the same time, because they both have an agility of 2. Next player 1 goes because his agility of 1 is the next lowest. The last person to go, ironically, is player 3, who has the highest agility but is using magic rather than physical. This is because sorcery takes a few more seconds to cast than just hitting someone with a sword. So, physical goes first regardless, which he didn't explain until this example. Then, the magic guys go. Regardless, agility only determines the order of each phase. So there's two phases in a, in a round, so each taking probably like five seconds. Well, he said, but can he say, like, um, at the first sentence that this that combat usually lasts like ten seconds. So uh, yeah. So it wouldn't be like five seconds, like a turn. Well, no, like for physical and then magical does the next five seconds. So it's kind of oh, like two okay. phases, I think. At least that's how I'm seeing it. Yeah. I mean, it's not too confusing. It's just, eh, I don't know. I could just, I just prefer the straight up, you know, initiative order that you just most people do. 
Yeah, me too. Uh, note about magic spells cannot be interrupted by physical attacks, force, distraction, etc. The only thing that would stop player 3 from lobbing a spell is if he was knocked unconscious or killed by his opponents before it was the player 3 turn. The new round begins exactly the same way, high agility first, and all physical attacks before magical attacks. This is a simple way to ad adjudicate it. Players declare whether they're using magic or physical combat. Physical phase 5 begins. Characters what? What is phase five? I'm done. What the fuck? Does it stand for five seconds? <laughs> I don't no, know. No, I think it's with characters with agility five, maybe? Oh, God. Characters in physical phase five declare their actions. Dice are rolled, damage dealed. Damage resolved. Any player characters are killed or unconscious out of combat. Physical phase four. Yeah, I think that's how it goes. And I think we might stop at character attributes because we've been going for a while. Yeah. Character attributes. Will. Confidence, mental strength, and stamina. Persistence, leadership, control, and ability to resist magic. Uh, magical aptitude. Ability to use magic. Uh, no other words on that. Theoretical knowledge. Sometimes referred to as theory, book smarts, abstract thinking. What a player char play character knows through study and instruction. It's also crucial for seeing into the realms of Nightmare and Candyland. <laughs> withdrawing energy into this dimension. So I, you need that to, to summon Candyman. Only only with a theoretical knowledge skill of 5 can you pass the Bubble Gloop Swamp. Only with a theoretical yeah, knowledge I score of 3 can you summon both Freddy Krueger and King Candy. That's <laughs> <laughs> I always hated when I, when I, like, you know, I got the card where, like, in Candy Lab, where you had to go to back to Plug B. I always hated that. No, what was that uh, horrible swamp near the end that, like, completely forces you to I start at the beginning? The swamp. That thing was hell. Oh, God, yeah. I, though, I would always like it when I, I got, like, the card for, like, to go to Queen Frostine, like, at the very beginning. I know they just realized yes. that we should probably do at some point. We should probably not just do RPGs, but also weird weird board games like from the European area. Because I know there's like a cool one where you manage train railroad corporations or something. Yeah, maybe. So that, that could be fun. Maybe, maybe we could do something like that one of these days. Anyway, uh, let's just polish it off and then we can wrap up. Uh, practical knowledge, sometimes called practice. It's good for doing things that come from hands-on experience, such as torturing someone for information or knowing specific things about people or places that are familiar. For example, knowing that the fiend who just walked into the brothel that you are familiar with is not only irregular, but is also very flashy with his money. I guess he's going to the clown brothel. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yeah! You, who's your ringmaster? Bazinga. Cunning. Being sly underhanded, this would come into play when your character uh, tries to lay a trap for an enemy, trick someone into giving you valuable in for information, or hiding one's intentions. Since I'm starting to slur, yeah, even I'm starting to get tired of this. Attraction. A character's personality, appearance, and likability. Also doubles for luck. Characters with a high attraction are naturally luckier than others. What? I said so better if I'm writing this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when you look like a failed, uh, when you look like you tried and failed to take the role of Robotnik in the Sonic movie. Brute force, physical strength and sheer might. Notice how little he put into that one. I think he's still salty about high school. Agility, dexterity, ability to move swiftly and carefully. Agility is good for dodging blows, shooting, or throwing a weapon. It is also necessary for using a laser sword. Because the lightsaber requires agility. The best Jedi you use lightsabers really fast. That's that's why Obi Wan was able to kill the Grievous, even though he was like really fast with his lightsabers. Uh, endurance, stamina, constitution, surviving physical stress, exhaustion, exhaustion. Automatically add six whole points to your endurance score to get your vitality. I hit points. That's your HP, yeah. Fiends also use this attribute to absorb damage. 
After figuring out the damage a fiend would take, subtract his endurance from the damage these wounds are soaked up. So basically, it's similar, but not quite to uh, the wound system and the storyteller system. And last but not least, vitality is your HP. And uh, I'm not feeling like reading that again, since that's basically what endurance does. And uh, I think we're going to... And again, he repeats himself down here. <laughs> <laughs> copying and pasting it in bigger and bolder fonts. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, so I think this is where we're going to leave off. Uh, this is probably going to take us like six episodes because every, although it, it is speeding up a bit because I think, uh, I think it's going to be less uh, condensed with such insanity. This is such undistilled. This is such, uh, uh, this is such undistilled uh, autism that it's it's a sight to behold. It's not, and the thing is, every every sentence of rambling isn't boring. All of it is just this is this is all. Every bit of it is just something that. I'm... This is like if Neil Breen sat down to write an RPG. It it really is. Well, no, no, you need more like talking about government hacking. Yeah, I mean, not just government hacking, but just evil people in government that need to be killed. So you'd basically be doing Crypto Mage from, uh, from Chad Walker. Probably, but, uh, but the, the style that we see here is very much what Neil Breen would write. Just this rambling stream of consciousness. I, I just get that vibe. Like, we're reading a manifesto. We're not reading an actual RPG. <laughs> do you think oh wait what do you think what happened was this was his cult's manifesto and he got and then what he gave to his uh cult was the rpg book he's like oh, oh yeah. if by rpg book you mean like the stapled papers from uh from kinkos he printed, yeah. is, like, anybody a else legitimately, kinkos? is anybody else legitimately getting a fucking headache from this because i fucking am holy shit yeah, no. I, I am. We can't read much more than I think cursed. nine to ten pages at a time, but uh, it is uh, it's cursed in some ways. But it's actually I'm just having a blast. Uh, I am enjoying this right now. It might turn into shit. Who knows? But at the very least, the setting itself is batshit enough that uh, it might make its way into some really gonzo games that I might have in the future. I thought I'm getting something to eat. Well, anyway, guys. <laughs> This is from all of us, and if you didn't hear it, if you, I know it was yesterday, but I hope you all had a happy Valentine's Day. I hope you all have a good night, and well, let's uh, let's hope we all don't die in a mass murder suicide. Deep. Fuck yeah! Drink the flavor aid. We survived one year. Can we survive another? <laughs> yeah, let's hope so because we have we have a lot planned, like. For, for this year. Oh god, hey. quick, get the cyanide capsules. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm drinking the flavor aid first. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of new here, so maybe I'm a little more enthusiastic, but I bet, like, by, by next year I'll probably be, be kind of like you guys. Talk on it! <laughs> Hey, what up? Oh god, everybody's dead. They drink the flavoring without me.